So welcome. This is an overview for the virtual class. This is the perfect time with all that's going on in our world. Every mom, every baby, every family is going to need you as soon as possible. If you're back at work already, yay. If not, when you go back, you're definitely going to be needed. This is a critical time. And we are already finding in hospitals that be more low birth weight babies, um, a lot more stress on mom and baby because many hospitals are not allowing a partner in. And so this is a really critical time for us to help make a change in the world. So every mom and baby deserves the best birth possible and so and families and so this is how we can make it happen with cst anyway um, a baby's experience of conception pregnancy and birth creates lifelong consequences for the baby the family and society as i already said we're at a unique moment in time and we have an opportunity to truly facilitate more positive experiences with conception pregnancy and birth by empowering mom, baby, and the whole family. Cranial sacral therapy is one of the most successful ways to reduce or eliminate stress and improve positive outcomes. Um, so with that, let's start talking about how we can do that. A little bit, the, a lot of you are new, and so I wanna tell you a little bit about the history and why that's important. Um, if you don't know me, I am Carol McClellan. I have been doing cranial sacral therapy for over 30 years. Um, impossible, I can't believe it. Um, anyway, so um, I very much was very honored to work with Dr. John very early on. At that point, my background was holistic health care and education and birth. And I was working in hospitals with some OB-GYNs and I was helping run their birth program and their birth education. We started training doulas and we started a doula certification program there that actually was before DONA was even in existence, doulas of North America. Um, and the head doc loved it. They were a fantastic group of OBs. Um, unfortunately, they, we weren't allowed to add, teach everybody cranial sacral, the midwives and the doulas, but I was invited to go to a military hospital by Captain DeGroote, who you see here on the, on the right side of your screen. She was the head of the military hospital, and she was a nurse midwife and loved cranial sacral therapy, so she invited me in, and we got carte blanche to the hospital. And so I started doing cranial sacral in the hospital obstetrics. Um, we did that for about two and a half years, and it was a fantastic learning experience to see what's the best way to use cranial sacral during pregnancy, during labor and delivery, and postpartum. But what we also found is we were very successful at working with moms and dads at the very thought of conception or beforehand, so we could help them give birth in the best way. Um, and so Somewhere along the time when we were working at the hospital, um, Captain DeGroote got a call from the Bureau of um, Medicine in Washington, D.C. saying there was about 800 of our military troops coming home they, from Iraq and Afghanistan, and they expected that one in five would have significant PTSD. All of them would have some PTSD. And so deal with it. And just like, Carol, I know Dr. Uplinger did all that work with the Vietnam vets. Do you think he'd come out and work with us, with our soldiers? And he did, and he came out, we did two intensives, and very successful. And when he saw what we were doing in the OB department, he's like, why isn't this part of our curriculum? So at that point, it did become part of the, part of the curriculum. We completely changed the pediatrics program so we can really concentrate on children and autism and all the different challenges with children. And then we could create a whole section. Now we have two classes on obstetrics, CCPB1, which stands for cranial sacral for conception, pregnancy, and birth. And then the second one is... Um, C CCPB2, which goes into more depth of the quantum physics of birth and all of the things Dr. John really loved about, about this work. Um, we are right now finally adding a class for the NICU. A number of you may be aware or may have been at the last Beyond the Dura, 
when I presented and I was fortunate enough to be able to um, work with one of our um, neonatologists who does cranial sacral therapy in Italy is doing a research project. And I had a neonatologist from America go over to Italy with me and see what they were doing in their NICU with cranial sacral and working on a project. So we are finally starting literally this weekend our first um, class, which is specifically for babies with challenges. And so that we can get more people into the NICU legitimately for cranial sacral therapy. So we're in very, very exciting times. And as I just read, as the baby's health, as the baby's birth goes, so determines the baby's whole life and everyone around that baby. So let's help them because we can get a lot more optimal births. The one, one thing we found out when we're at the military base is we could find out that by treating moms, pregnant moms, um, our cesarean rate dropped to like 2%, which is incredible and so much more optimal to have a regular birth because the moms felt more comfortable with cranial sacral therapy. And so their anxiety was lessened and everything. So our cesarean rate went way down. Um, there is a whole list of things. Um, if you're familiar, if you take the class, there's the whole list of the clinical observations or discoveries of what happened when we were working on the military base. And so we found out many, many things which we've incorporated into the classes for you so that you can use them. Um, and we are happily now starting to use them in more and more medical centers and hospitals, which is fantastic. So that's why a little bit of the history is important because some of that research has really come out, which is now in this class. And it is also showing us how giving us more access to more medical personnel. Um, the one thing, if you are not familiar with what we're doing with cranial sacral therapy and conception, pregnancy, and birth. Next time you're at a class or you can look for the little, um, the little discovery brochures, discover cranial sacral, there is one for CCPB and in the back of it, there's a letter from Captain DeGroote, which is great for, for introducing people to it, saying that she, after, she will go on record to recommend cranial sacral therapy and it should be in every hospital. And so it was a very exciting study. That was in 2004, 2004 and five that we finished that we presented at the 2005 Beyond the Dura. And so a lot of exciting research came out of that and we're continu continuing to bring that forward. So one of the main, main things that we wanna talk about is blending, melding and neutral. Now you do cranial sacral, you know we talk about this in every class and you're probably like, oh, here we go again. But it is so incredibly important because those babies are still developing. And I say babies, fetuses, but really even neonates are still very vulnerable and it, impressionable and their brain is still developing. And we want to make sure we are not interfering with that process. And we want it to be a positive process between baby and mom. And so it is really, really important for our blending and melding and for us to be in that really energetically neutral place. You know, I have seen some of the most advanced, beautiful therapists have a pregnant mom come into the room and they're so excited to tune into baby that their energy gets there ahead of time. And you can almost see the baby move across the belly because it's like, whoa. And so it's really important that we're cognizant of that. So to help us all connect, because we're all not together um, uh, physically, but at least we're together virtually. So let's all reach out and do a little connection. So um, just take a deep breath. We should be doing this every day for ourselves. Feel your feet on the floor. And feel your grounding energy of the earth just coming up your legs. All the way up to your body. All the way up to the top of your head to where you feel very centered and grounded. And from this very centered, grounded place, 
give yourself a gift on this beautiful Sunday. Give yourself, bring in whatever feels appropriate to you in the way of unconditional love, universal energy, a light, sunlight, and bring it down through the top of your head where you used to have a soft spot, the bregma, also energetically your crown chakra. Bring it all the way down and fill up your dural too. Feel how good that feels to fill yourself up. And when your dural tube is nice and full, expand out a little further and fill up all the cells in your body. Now, when your body feels nice and full and filled, just gently reach out and tune in to all the people on this virtual class. Realize that we are all connected no matter where we are, and we are an extended family, all out there doing beautiful work at this time. This doing, this grounding and filling also is really, really lovely for helping you bring your RAS down. And when your RAS is down, it will help the mom and the baby calm down as well, okay? So take a deep breath. Thank yourself for being kind and thank you. I feel all of you. And this is the kind of thing we need to keep putting out in the world. We need to keep putting out all that love and all that light. So let's move on from this very blended grounded place. Let's talk about how cranial sacral therapy assists in conscious conception. Now, when I say conscious, I mean, we're very aware of it. Mom and dad are aware of it, and they can actually change that. It creates a beautiful way to work with the epigenetics. As we know, we will talk about epigenetics in a little bit. But by doing it in awareness, this is a conscious way for conception. And how cranial sacral therapy helps, you assist the mom and dad to be clear of old stuff, Physical body is more balanced. It helps clear the way for better hormone communication and better communication between mom and dad. As you can see by this uh, picture, ideally we would treat the mom, we would treat the dad, and then we treat them together. And so it would be ideal to do this before every conception. As we know, <laughs> We're not there yet, that's not always the way. And so it is never too late to go back and do completion of the biological process, which you learn in SER. And that's what we're doing with these parents. They already had a daughter that had issues. She had brain issues. But by going back and changing where they were and their conscious conception, it literally shifted their daughter. Okay, remember, you cannot change what happens to someone, but we can definitely help how they change, how they hold that story in their cells. And so very important to really remember this and it's a beautiful way to utilize it. So let's go ahead and move forward. We start this off by talking about the hormones. We will look at the pituitary gland and both sides of it and how the hormones function. And we go into the hormones and you'll palpate hormones. And you have to realize that the hormones have to connect and communicate. They're communicators through the blood. They have to communicate all the way down to the reproductive system. So everybody, when they're talking about fertility, wants to look at the reproductive system. But we also have to look at the hormone communication between the reproductive system. And as you know, if any of you ever had the chance to talk to Dr. John many years ago, or if you've read his work, he was all about getting all the parts to communicate. Because when we communicate, when parts communicate, they can work together in a more symbiotic relationship. So we start behind the eye, you know, or that little, you know, when you're, if there's a saying that your parents might say, your mother might say, oh, that happened before you were born, before you were a glimmer in my eye. And it truly is back there somewhere. They weren't too far off because it is back there where we have to start looking at the hormones and how we can help release them and help them move better with cranial sacral therapy. So we look at the anterior hormones 
We look at the posterior hormones, everything that works together for fertility. And we make sure they're all moving well. And we make sure that they're moving down and they're communicating well with the reproductive system. Okay, you already know this. You know how to treat the um, cranial sacral system. Now we just fine tune it to go in. And you know, if you remember basic cranial sacral therapy, where's the pituitary gland? It's right there in that little place called the cella tersica, the Turkish saddle. And it's right there where it's protected by a little coating of pia mater, that soft mater that helps bring in the nutrients. And it has that little bony saddle to protect it because at birth, the pituitary gland is not completely um, developed and it continues to develop as well as the cella tersica is not completely solid. So it allows everything to move. So really important for us to be aware of this on the parents so that we can be aware of it when it's time to tune into babies. So we also go back and look at the pineal gland. Very important because that is light receptive. We talk about many studies that are done in fertility that have to do with light because the pineal gland sets our circadian rhythms. Um, it also is connected to that spiritual part of us, the DMT molecule. Um, but also they were doing research with women with um, menstrual problems and if you re if any of you've read a book or have heard of an old book called the red tent um, they talk about how all women used to be in sync with the moon and all their cycles flowed with the moon and so um, now that we have modern lighting and you know fake lighting and all of that um, it can throw our pineal gland off it changes it and so they did a whole research project called Luniception to see what happens. And really, that candlelight, because it used to be you went to bed when it got dark and you got up when it got light. If you had anything, any light in the evening, it was firelight or candlelight. And that actually is different. And your pineal gland notices that light differently. And it sets off um, some oxytocin, which is why it's a feel-good thing. And it, Maybe that's why it's romantic to have candles and, and candlelight when you're courting, right? <laughs> then we will go on and we will talk about the, um, we'll talk about the reproductive system. We talk about the prostate. We'll talk about the sperm journey. You will learn how to um, palpate the prostate indirectly. As you know, you cannot do it directly. If, um, if you were able to go straight from the, grossly palpate, which you won't do, you'll do it very lightly, from with your ulnar surface right at the top of that, um, the pubic synthesis, you will run into the bladder. And so you're working through the soft tissue and we teach you how to work with that. And we teach you how to dialogue with it if it needs to be. And we teach you how to understand where the sperm goes and how long it takes the sperm to move through that. And so you have a whole lesson called the sperm journey. So you can help a man before conception, ideally, um, be able to clear any old emotions, any old restrictions, so he's in the best place possible to conceive. Then we talk about the uterus. And you can, we talk about the top picture. You can see the uterus in the proper position. And then we talk about all the potential positions the uterus might be in. There are actually six main um, ligaments that attach to the uterus and help hold it up and suspend it almost like a hammock um, because you have this very small pear-shaped uterus that has the potential to grow big enough to hold a full-term baby and so it needs to have the room but it needs the stability and that's why it has all these ligaments that we will talk about and demonstrate in class for you but think about all the potential strain patterns in a woman's body that can throw that off. So we go over all of that as well, so that the mom-to-be can be in the proper structural position. It also allows her to release any energy, um, any emotion, anything that she needs to clear out. So her, it's the best place possible. We basically, it's like getting the house in order. You know, when moms and dads want to have a baby, they spend all this time and energy painting a nursery and all that. The most important nursery the most important place to get in order first 
is the womb because that's baby's classroom for the next nine months. And we will talk about how once we've looked at tuning into the hormones and tuning in the reproductive system, we talk about how the whole hormones move down, communicate with the reproductive system, the reproductive system sends um, messages back up. And there's a whole bunch of communication going on. If you have strain patterns throughout the body that are affecting that flow or that communication, we can clear them with cranial sacral therapy. So we talk about all this physically, and then we talk about what we call the windows of fertility and looking at the aspects of are mom and dad both ready? Are they on the same page? Are they both ready physically, emotionally? Um, are they are in agreement on things or agree to disagree? And that's when it's really good to work with them together. So they're both on the same page for fertility. And we talk about, about epigenetics. Um, in a, in a more general term, you know, we know now that genes, we talk about this in class, I know a lot of you have heard of Dr. Bruce Lipton, um, who is the geneticist that studied genes and realized that genes, like a computer, it makes up the hard drive. What makes up the soft drive is the epigenetics. And so with that, he knows you can change, you can actually influence or change your genes and epigenetics are the markers that cause the DNA and, every, and the genes to turn on and off. But what creates the epigenetics is external factors. So mom, baby is basically, when mom gets pregnant, baby's basically swimming in mom's emotional soup. Everything that baby experiences is its environment. Everything is helping shape its future. The beauty of that is we can create, with the helping the parents create a really more optimal environment. CST creates the optimal epigenetics in an environment by following and facilitating the inner physicians of both the mother and the child. Remembering that we always wanna keep the mom and the baby communicating, almost treat them as one, because they are one for nine months. And then even the first nine months after birth, which we call the, the second nine months of, of pregnancy or the fourth trimester, um, the baby should be skin to skin as much as possible and we treat them together because they are basically sharing the same environment. So mom's environment is baby's environment. So if mom is stressed because of what's going on in the world right now, baby's gonna feel that stress. And so we wanna work with mom and baby to help them be in the most optimal place. And we don't, remember as with everything with cranial sacral therapy, we follow, but we help facilitate the process. So after we talk about working with um, fertility and conception, then we talk about how cranial sacral helps the magical blossoming of pregnancy. You'll notice our positive words. We're not saying, I mean, it's a magical blossoming of pregnancy. When women are like, oh my gosh, I feel like a big cow and you know, and everything's big. And um, we really, really want to help them feel positive and remember the miracle and the beauty of birth. Um, it is really such a, an amazing thing. We have scientists studying it and they are like, this, the, this doesn't add up. You shouldn't be able to create this, but yet we do. And so it is such a sacred thing that we want to really empower the moms to feel positive and realize that her body's growing, creating a beautiful baby. If she's getting extra fat on her legs or whatever, that is also there partly for protection, but partly to have the fat stores to build all that extra breast milk to help baby's brain grow and baby's muscles and bones grow. So help using positive words all the time. And you'll notice we do that throughout. But how we work with cranial sacral, here you can see it helps mom and baby communicate. That is considered prenatal bonding. It is one of, there is research showing that that by itself can completely change the outcomes of birth. And so it is hugely, hugely important. And we will talk a little bit about that today and you'll talk more about it in the class. 
helps relieve restrictions in mom to better accommodate a growing baby. Not uncommon that mom has strain patterns somewhere and maybe all those ligaments that were holding it or maybe the uterus isn't in the most optimum position. We can help the, a mom accommodate that for in a, get in a better place structurally. Um, we help mom to feel empowered to tune into the needs of her and her child and make informed decisions for her child um, and inform her child of what's going on so they're working as a team. You know, I, I've worked on 75-year-old women who their issue goes back to birth or challenges with a birth and their child. And they're like, wow, I never knew I could talk with them and not talk at them like, hi baby, looking at it, but actually tune in and talk with the baby. And it is huge, huge, um, really wonderful consequences. And so the more we empower the mom, the more it's gonna change how her pregnancy goes and how her labor and delivery goes. And the more we have found when we're working at the military base, the more we treated the mom during pregnancy, if we didn't wait till treat her you know, first they started calling me into the hospital that went at labor and delivery. Mom would get to four centimeters, they'd give her an epidural, they'd call me in. And I said, would it be possible to call me in before you do the epidural so we can see how cranial sacral can help that? And maybe we can delay the epidural. We would never, allow, we would never not allow a mom pain management if she needed it. But by the time moms got in the hospital, like, no, no, I need an epidural because they were so sure they needed it and there was that fear. So if you started, I said to Captain DeGroote, would it be okay if we start treating the moms earlier in pregnancy? So we did that. And that's when all of our cesarean rates went down because we empowered the moms to mem remember their bodies know how to do this. If they were all by themselves in the middle of nowhere, their bodies know how to give birth and it would grow and it would be beautiful. And so we need to empower that mom and the baby and get her and the baby communicating. Um, so with that, that's why I said they're more willing to delay an epidural. I will tell you, um, we did not have one mom that we treated in the hospital need um, Pitocin. They did not need to be induced. We did have a couple that needed a cesarean and aren't we grateful that cesareans are so safe and easy nowadays. So they're more, um, when we work with them, they're more likely to avoid an unnecessary birth intervention like Pitocin, like an unnecessary cesarean. Um, I live in California, it's we, uh, voluntary cesareans are okay now it's like they can choose to have a cesarean it's easier the doctors can put it on the books they know the date and they do it um that's not the most optimal thing and we'll talk about that later but if we could get empower moms to go through it it really is so much better for the growth of the baby the communication between the mom and the baby and so very very powerful thing So we talk about the physical changes during pregnancy and what to see in the mom and how to help those with cranial sacral therapy. We talk about what's going on. Obviously, we do cranial sacral therapy at 10 weeks. The cranial sacral system is almost in, pretty much intact and by 12 weeks, it's functioning in a fetus. If you really listen carefully, you learn how to you will learn how to palpate the um, fetal cranial rhythm in the class when we do the hands-on class next year. But if you listen carefully, you can actually tune in as early as 12 to 14 weeks. Okay, remember there's a two-week window of variability because of, depending on how their conception was uh, timed. But anyway, it's really amazing to see how tiny that is. You can see the top picture. That's a 10 week old fetus and its little cranial rhythm is already functioning. And so it's huge. We can really help use that to help the baby and mom communicate. And it is a really beautiful way to help them communicate. Not that we communicate with baby and communicate with mom. We get mom, baby to communicate. Um, very interesting to note that a female fetus has ovaries by 12 weeks, about the same time the cranial sacral system is intact. Six to seven million eggs by 20 weeks, that's five months. Um, quite, the baby is probably not even, at, at 20 weeks, not a good chance of being able to survive outside the womb, but yet that little fe female fetus has all the eggs she will ever have in her entire life. 
So you can see by the beautiful picture above, that pregnant mom, if that baby is a female, she's already having an influence on the eggs, a little mind boggling. So really even more important for her to be, uh, for us to work with her to be in a positive place, to feel good physically, emotionally, and energetically, and so mentally. And so she knows that she will have an effect on those eggs. Um, one of our instructors actually got to do this. We got to treat her daughter for fertility, and then she was treating her daughter through pregnancy and found out it was a baby girl, fetus, fetus. And um, so they worked with that. So they, she was talking about, oh, you were in my uterus a long time ago inside your mommy. And so, you know, it's just amazing to see that and how we can use that. You know, with cranial sacral therapy, we can go back and shift old patterns so that people don't have to carry those on, whether it's an emotional pattern or a physical pattern. This gives you a little more indication of how that miracle is possible. And there is a lot of research on it now. But cranial sacral therapy is one of the few um, therapies that actually can do something about it and create that change in the body. So in summary, with pregnancy, all the amazing changes that take place in the mom's anatomy show the beautiful design of how prepared her body is to conceive, conceive and nurture the baby for the nine month gestation. Wonderful example of the body's intelligence and why we should follow its lead. This is why cranial sacral works so well, because we listen to that inner physician or that inner wisdom. It can help the mom's body um, with, through the changes she's experiencing, so the symptoms. Sorry, we got a glitcher, but anyway, so she can have a more enjoyable pregnancy and the symptoms are less. <clears throat> we talk a bit about the placenta. Um, it is, uh, we talk about it in CCPB1 a little bit. We'll talk about it more in CCPB2 because it really, it is miraculous. A mom grows a whole new organ just for this one child and that is the baby's lifeline. And so it is really important to be able to palpate it and to be able to help baby tune into it and maybe help mom tune into it. And so we will teach you and work with you on that in the class, in the virtual class as well. We'll talk about palpating two cranial rhythms, um, moms and babies, and we'll do a little exercise that in that in the virtual class. Very important to get mom and baby to communicate. Again, this is a beautiful way to encourage their communication. You can feel mom's rhythm, you can feel babies. You have mom talk to baby and all of a sudden baby's rhythm stops in a significance detector and you're like, oh, something mom's talking about is significant. Get mom to tune into the baby and the more we do this, we get mom tuning into baby. We don't wanna be in the way of the mother-child connection but it is absolutely amazing when they can do that and it completely changes. I can tell you the thousands of babies and pregnant moms I've treated, I can, I've heard this over and over and our other instructors will concur that those babies that when moms tune into them and communicate with them that prenatal bonding that they get partly through cranial sacral but also because we consciously have them do it, um, it completely changes and makes them more confident and they are more comfortable with themselves. So it's a huge piece. Um, this is a really lovely example of a woman who was, that I was treating. Um, her mom is a friend of mine and she was due and we were out at lunch and she called her mom and said, I'm not, I'm not in labor and it's the due date. So she came over and of course, you know, cranial sacral, I'll treat someone anywhere in a restaurant, you know, on a boat, on a plane, on a boat with a goat. <laughs> Anyway, um, so we put our hands on and we had her tune into the baby. Now, during pregnancy, she was beautiful tuning into baby, but she got really nervous, you know, because it's the due date. And she said, but he was supposed to come today. And so we had her tune in and she was so nervous. She wasn't as good as at tuning into him that time. So I just said, connect your heart to his. So grandma to be is across the table taking photos. The minute I had her connect her heart to the baby's heart, um, this mom's wearing all black. You can see the pink on her belly and on her heart. That just showed up when we had mom and baby connect hearts and it's really that powerful.
So it's really, really important. Preni and that's prenatal bonding. It's what all babies want to know. They want to know, am I welcome? What's going on? Do you feel me? Do you love me? Do I matter in this world? Um, by doing prenatal bonding, they're studying. This creates better communication for life, either easier pregnancy, easier deliveries, more confidence at birth, lower cesarean birth, less or no, um, less or no, um, uh, potential side effects or sorry that's cutting up Le, um, it's helping with the de uh, postpartum depression less or no postpartum depression the nice thing is cranial sacral can help with that also um, but just getting that communication going helps with it and better functioning communication for life for the whole family when we were on the military base we got the dads to come talk to the babies and their jet fighter pilots are like, yeah, you know, I play with them when they're older. But when they came and tuned into those babies and started talking to them, it changed them. And they even said it changed their relationship, not only with those babies, but with the children they already had that they didn't talk to in utero. And one, if you've taken our courses, you know that one of my favorite things that came out of that, this very tough jet fighter pilot, you know, was all of a sudden he's talking to baby, we're in labor and delivery. And it's a contraction. It's like, don't worry, baby. It's not painful. Mom's, it's a power hug. Mom's power hugging you out. Every contraction. What a beautiful, positive thought, isn't it? And so by prenatal bonding, mom and baby bonding, but even dads or significant others and other siblings, if there are, hugely, hugely important. And when we start seeing that and children realize their matter, they're going to be more compassionate it's going to make them better human beings and this is how these are the kind of things we do to create a better future we're going to talk briefly in the class about the coccyx release very important because of its connection to the cranial sacral system um, we won't do it in the virtual class but you'll get to do it when we are all together next year but just to tune into it is huge and you'll start to see how i've treated two women that had problems with their coccyx and they had fertility issues and no one looked at their coccyx but because we were arcing their whole body with cranial sacral therapy they were able to find it and so it completely changed a lot of the strain patterns and we were able to help them be in a better place to conceive we will talk about the you can see the connectedness here with some of the muscles of the pelvic floor of the coccyx and we go into this in more didactic ways, so you're really aware of it. And if you become aware of it on yourself, then it's much easier when you're treating others. We'll talk about the pelvic floor and all the connectedness and how to tune into that. Um, the coccyx is a big stabilizer for that. But when mom's pregnant, everything's softer. So in a way, it's easier to treat. But you also want to make sure it keeps the stability. And so we will talk about that as well. Um, we'll talk about labor, when the cranial sacral and the labor of love, really, it's a labor of love, it's not a war story. Empowering mom and baby to have a beautiful birth experience. We'll get the cranial rhythms in sync with the cranial sacral techniques to help. Minimal invent, um, intervention, nature's design, right? Um, and you can see Captain DeGroote right there coming in and helping with the encouraged labor and delivery and get the dad involved. And we make it a labor of love so it doesn't feel like a war story. Um, is there a little bit of pain for baby? Yes, but that is setting up part of, that's natural to set up baby's um, sympathetic nervous system to be able to survive in the world when it comes out. Now, when there's too much or too much trauma, that can get set into the baby and we talk about that in classes we talk about it in the peds classes how that can actually be a set point and so we want to work with mom and baby a little bit of pain is normal and a little discomfort for the baby coming through the birth canal but that's actually a good thing it's training baby for the outside world we'll talk about how to work in different places hospital or complementary setting We'll talk about how baby moves down through the cranial, um, through the birth canal and how the cranial bones are affected and how baby coming down, how we can follow that strain pattern to release any tension patterns that might be there. 
we talk about <clears throat> Dr. John and I wrote up how, what happens to the baby. Well, he wrote it and then I helped him rewrite it in a more positive way. But um, what happens when the, squeezing the baby's head through the delivery, it also encourages the permeation of the cranial sacral cerebral spinal fluid through the brain tissue, down through the spinal canal and out through the subdural spaces. It also helps get the venous blood, uh, blood to drain the skull vault. So as soon as the head's delivered, that fresh arterial blood can enter the brain. And we talk about all those things. It gets the bone moving, baby's first cranial sacral treatment. And so we talk about how important that is, stretching and stimulating the meridians so the organs are well supplied. The squeezing of the ribs as baby comes through, that squeezes the amniotic fluid out so it's easier for a baby to take that beautiful first breath. So it's really baby's first cranial sacral treatment when baby comes down through the birth canal. If baby misses it, we need, we'll talk about how to help recreate that. We'll talk about oxytocin and how that re reduces stress by centrally activating the parasympathetic nervous system. So it reduces fear and it helps the stress hormone and increases sociability. Oxytocin is the feel good hormone. And that is what we all need a little more now. Smiling makes that happen, so smile at people. Um, but no COVID, just as FYI for right now, they've been doing tests. No COVID has been found in amniotic fluid or breast milk. Remember how powerful that breast milk is, but it strengthens the baby's immune system. So oxytocin is released with skin to skin, breastfeeding, and a well-functioning cranial sacral system and connection. So we'll talk about birth presentations and head molding and how to treat them. We'll talk about um, different birth interventions, forceps and vacuum delivery, and what that does to the cranial sacral system and how to treat it. Um, we'll talk about the intracranial membranes and how that is, how they are different in a neonate than an adult that you might be treating. Um, we'll talk a little bit about microbiome of the baby, the microbirth, and how baby's microbiome and the immune system get set up. Some of you may have taken Nikki Kennard's class on the enteric nervous system, the gut-brain connection is beautiful. Um, this is part of that. And um, so if baby misses part of that, skin to skin bonding is a huge piece of it. Natural birth is a huge piece of it. Um, so we will go into that a little bit because that helps set up baby's immune system. We'll talk about cesarean birth and how it can be a positive experience. We'll talk about the cha uh, pressure changes. We'll talk about the deprivation of the, the microbiome and the journey through the birth canal and how to work with that completion the natural birth process communicating with baby so we have specific cranial sacral applications for cesarean birth and they're getting better and better throughout the world at trying to make cesareans a little more family friendly so mom can at least touch the baby um, we'll talk about the sacred hour and how they're working to get cesarean moms to be able to get the baby on the chest within seven minutes so that baby gets that first hour of skin to skin bonding. That's called the sacred hour and it is huge at building the brain. There are nine things, there are nine aspects of that, the neurological aspects that if baby misses that window of time cannot recreate. So we're really helping mom get more comfortable so she can have baby skin to skin as quickly as possible. We'll talk about how to work with labor and delivery and throughout how to do cranial sacral in different positions and things you can do to help alleviate challenges. Um, we'll talk about cranial sacral for postpartum. Um, you can see a little bit of molding on this baby. No worries. Most important baby skin to skin and we let the, the family communicate and have their bonding time. That is more important. Um, this baby did have a little bit of hard time latching on so we did a little cranial sacral with the baby on the mom so we didn't interfere interfere with the connection and baby was able to latch on so we'll talk about how soon after post after birth you should be doing cranial sacral therapy we'll talk about the fontanels those little fountains um, the fontanels really are made up of part of the cranial sacral system and we'll talk about those those soft spots there's six We'll talk about the development of the cranial bones a little bit that fill in those fontanels or those soft spots. 
Here you can see I love this picture of the individual cranial bones because we will go over the individual cranial bones because they are completely different. A newborn has 36 sutures, uh, an adult has 25. You have four bones that make up the occiput and they, at birth, they are not all solidified into one bone. Um, you can see from this photo, there's actually even a little suture in the frontal bone. So we go over all the individual bones and how to treat them. Um, we do talk about the fontanelles, and if you look in the bottom right-hand picture here, you see a fontanel that actually is made up of the cranial sacral system. That is dura right there, the, in, the meningia, the membrane. And so we'll talk about how to work with that. Obviously, we're gonna talk about breastfeeding. Um, well, the more we can help moms breastfeed, the better. We know that some moms have a difficult time and we would never shame them, but the more we can help moms prepare for birth, the bit more successful they will be in breastfeeding. The sooner they get baby skin to skin after birth, that also leads to easier breastfeeding. And that is another reason they're trying to get baby skin to skin after cesarean, because that will help with breastfeeding. So we go into breastfeeding in the class and how cranial sacral can help. We'll talk a little bit about tongue tie. It's very prevalent right now all over the world. We'll talk about what cranial sacral therapy can and cannot do. Um, we'll talk about getting the uh, revision, which means they're either clipping or lasering that frenulum and how to work with that because there's a lot, if you, you're probably very much aware of how prevalent it is. There are so many groups online support support groups with families so on and so forth of uh, babies having one and two and three revisions and how much frenulum is left or are they just cutting scar tissue etc cetera, etc cetera. so we will go over all that and what to look for and how to treat that there's actually a textbook on that and the woman who wrote it dr allison hazel baker does cranial sacral therapy and we have worked with her to help develop part of the program we're bringing in um, and so we will talk about that and how cranial sacral can help. We'll talk about that along with the whole structure and the structure you've been working with anyway, you're gonna do it a little differently with children because the cranial bones are different or might not be completely solidified into adult bones, but we'll talk about how to work with that with children because that's not only just tongue tie, but it has to do with breastfeeding and suck, swallow and breathe. So that's a lot, but it's a, a lot. That's why there's more than one class. Um, but one of the best things you can do for our children is to have them begin life with smoothly functioning cranial sacral systems. You already seen how much the baby has developed at, when it's ready to come into the world. If we could help them be in the best place possible, they're gonna go on and have a much better life. So instead of just treating them when they're children, if we can start treating them early on, when they're a thought in their mother's eye or a glimmer in their mother's eye, um, they're gonna have the most optimal success with that. So at this time, I would like to um, go through and have a raise of hands, if you can do that, then um, Elise will help look at who's in line first. And we have time for questions and answers. We've left time for that. I know some of you, and I do wanna uh, address this, some of you, if you have not taken SER yet, um, because of the changes in classes, there's a possibility they're letting some people take the virtual class of CCPB, as long as you take the SER before you do the hands-on class, because you have to be aware of how to dialogue with a baby and how to palpate, et cetera. Um, but also if you have not worked with, one of the things you can do right now if you haven't worked with pregnant moms and babies is get very good, get very, very good at palpating the cranial rhythm on smaller, 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 smaller children and babies and get very good at doing a still point and be very good at your boundaries and your energetic boundaries. Those are all some of the best things you can do because those are the key things that we use over and over again when we're treating um, parents trying to conceive and newborns, okay, pregnancy and newborns.